on Spotify is called Rise and Shine Rhythms this morning, and we're going to start in a comfortable seat. So whatever that looks like for you, it could be kneeling, you could be cross-legged, you could be with your legs straight out, you might have the support of a wall. So however, you can have a nice tall spine. And when you find that comfy seat, just closing your eyes and just bringing your awareness inside. So this morning, this practice, we're focusing on our internal rhythms. And we have three of those. We have our uh, breath and also the beat of the heart and the rhythm of our brain waves. And when we can affect one of those rhythms, so when we manipulate the breath, then we also can impact the heart and slow down the brain waves, become a little more present. So just take this moment of awareness to just explore your rhythms now, the pace of the breath, listening for the sound of your heartbeat, and just noticing what's going on with your thoughts, your brain activity. And when we bring this awareness in, it's really just to be a witness. It's not to pass a judgment. So maybe your mind is busy. You don't have to try and change it. We just notice what you notice. And the aim really is just to keep this awareness, to just continue to notice how your rhythms are affected throughout your practice today. So I'm just having one more moment here to really connect to the breath, connecting to your heart, and just really feeling that deep connection to your inner rhythms. Before we start to move, we're going to have a short pranayama practice. And this morning we're going to do Brahmari breath. Here we can really see the change of rhythms when we create the vibration with the breath. So if you're familiar at home, just start your practice. But if you um, need to know a little more, this is the humming breath, a bumblebee breath. So we breathe in through the nose and out through the nose. But as you exhale, you create vibration, you hum the exhale. And you can do this sometimes closing your eyes and plugging your ears in Prachahara. So whenever you're ready, big inhale through the nose. And as the exhale comes out, you create that little bumblebee breath. breathing and when you finish that final hum of the breath on the exhale just take a moment to again just notice 
what you notice about your rhythms. Maybe there's been a shift or a change. And then when you're ready, just gonna start to slowly flutter your eyes open, letting them stay down, looking towards the mat as they adjust to the light in your space. And if you're not on your knees, just bring yourself onto your knees, sitting back to the heels, and just gonna bring your palms together in front of the heart. And as you breathe in, we're gonna come up to a high kneel and reach your arms up to the ceiling. And as you breathe out, just have a bow down so we can bring the palms and the forehead towards the mat. And then as you breathe in, we're gonna rise back up again. And as you breathe out this time, take your hips to the right and you're gonna bring your hands to the left and then sink yourself back down. And let the hips reach away from the hands, but the hands really glued to the floor. So we get a couple breaths here, stretching the right side. And then on your next inhale, Bring it back up through the center. And as you exhale, hips go left, hands go right, and we try to work that opposition a bit. So reaching away from the hands, the hands reaching away from the hips, and we're having a breath or two here. Next inhale, bring yourself back up to that high kneel, and your palms are gonna meet. And then as you exhale, bowing down again till your palms find the mat, Straighten your arms and come to an all four position. So your knees are underneath your hips and your wrists under your shoulders. And just gonna pull the heart forward and tilt the sit bones up. So one little cow stretch. And then as you exhale, we're gonna pull the belly in, curl the spine into that cat pose, looking to the tummy, breathing into the back of the body. And then as you inhale, coming to neutral spine, pressing back to your heels in child pose. So we can have an active child pose where we reach the fingertips away, keep the elbows lifted, and just try and keep drawing the shoulder blades towards the rib cage so we have space for the neck. And now I'm gonna slide your hands towards your knees, tuck your toes under, and press back towards your heels so that you're in the low squat of Malasana pose. So this sort of, um, feet parallel, the heels reaching to the floor, maybe they touch, they don't have to though. And then from here on your next breath, lift your hips and fold to your legs. Let the head relax, keep a dip in the knees as much as you need to, have a couple breaths here, letting the legs wake up. And then when you inhale, push up through the feet and rise up to stand. Let your palms meet overhead. Exhale, bring your hands back to your heart and walk your way forward to the front of your mat. And then inhale, reach up nice and tall again. Exhale, dive down to the legs. And with your next breath, take a giant step back with your right foot. So you're coming to low lunge. We're gonna bring the knee to the mat as well and lift the heart lengthen through the front of the body and the back of the body here. And then plant the hands, lift the hips, press back, downward facing dog. From down dog, let's just ripple forward into plank. So just bring your shoulders over your wrists. Maybe the feet have to slide away. Keep those shoulders spread across the back, pull the belly up, couple breaths here and then lower yourself down. So knees can always touch first, elbows bend. We try and keep the collarbone wide and then draw those shoulders off the neck as you curl up into Cobra. Strong legs and belly and then exhale your way back again, downward facing dog. From here, let's just float the knees to the mat again and reach the arms up overhead. Palms meet together. And as you exhale, let your hips go right and your hands go left again. And then next breath, we're gonna rise back up. Take it the other way. Hips go to the left, hands go to the right. 
and then inhale back up through the center bring your palms back to the mat tuck your toes lift your hips you're back and down dog as you inhale reach your right leg up to the ceiling and as you exhale step it forward low lunge again left knee to the mat this time we'll have a breath lifting the heart and then as you exhale tuck your back toes step forward fold to your legs and then inhale we're going to power up to stand let your palms meet overhead exhale back to the heart take a moment here notice your rhythms now can you keep the breath with you as we do the other side so inhale reach up nice and tall exhale pour it forward to the legs giant step back on the next breath with your left foot lower that left knee lift the chest and then exhale back to down dog have a breath in down dog and then we're going to make our way forward to plank and from plank lowering down bending those elbows back keeping the chest open and on the next breath let's curl it up to cobra and then press it back downward facing dog again from down dog float your knees back to the mat rise your arms up again we're going to do our little side stretches so hips go to the right hands go to the left on the exhale and then as you inhale back up through center exhale hips go one way hands go the other so take it the opposite direction and then bring yourself back up hands are going to come down to the mat tuck the toes lift the hips down dog and then when you breathe in left leg is going to reach up to the ceiling as you breathe out step it forward lower that back knee final low lunge and then we stepping forward and folding to the legs have a breath here and then rising up to stand this time as your fingertips reach up to the ceiling try to come up onto all ten of your toes tiptoes here and then as you exhale bring your heels to the mat bend your knees take a seat in utkatasana so one breath standing tall up onto the tiptoes and the next breath ground the heels bend the knees sit back one more time rising up onto the tiptoes and then letting the heels come bend the knees sit back this time come all the way to forward fold and then inhale lengthen the spine half forward bend and exhale fold again so you can get those palms under your shoulders step back to plank this one we're going to have a breath or two in again and then lower yourself down now here take your arms out a little wider and come onto the fingertips so that you're tented out in your fingertips draw the shoulders off the neck ground through the legs and just coil up into cobra but let your arms help as much as it's comfortable looking to stretch the front not pinch the back and then exhale lower two more of those breathing in opening the front of the body breathing out lowering down one more time shouldn't feel any discomfort in your lower back so it doesn't have to be high and then exhale lower bring your hands back under your shoulders tuck your toes back to downward facing dog nice slow deep breaths here as you breathe in reach your right leg up to the ceiling as you breathe out giant step forward this time coming to standing lunge so we're going to reach the arms up to the ceiling we keep pulling through that back heel staying up on the tiptoes if you can bending into that front knee have a breath or two here just notice what's going on with your rhythm the pace of your breath listening for your heartbeat staying present with your next exhale swing your arms behind and reach forward towards that front thigh so we're on a diagonal with the body you could imagine you've got a rod sort of inserted in you that's going to hold you here and then as you take an inhale just reach your arms forward and as you exhale pull them back 
couple more. Inhale, send them out. Exhale, pull them back. One more. Inhale, reach it forward. Exhale, take it back. This time, open your arms wide. And then as you take one breath, turn to the right. So the left hand's gonna sort of tap the inside of that right leg. Then bring it back to center. Two more. Exhale to rotate. Inhale, bring it back. Last one. Turning to the right. Bring it back to center. From here, let's take the hands to the mat and just see if you could straighten that front leg. And let yourself just soften over that front leg. Notice that the breath is different here when you're being still compared to when you're moving. Now, left hand's gonna stay on the mat and we're gonna start to turn to the right and open that right arm. If we don't feel possible for the shoulder, just take your right hand to your hip. So this is like a revolved triangle. Try and pull that right hip back and draw that left hip forward. So the twist moves, the pelvis moves the twist. That we don't do it the opposite way. We don't want to keep the pelvis still. And you can stay right here breathing. Or maybe you want to lift that back leg. The left hand can come a little further forward to lift the left leg. Keep that rotation. And then when you take your next breath, lower the back leg. Spin yourself to stand into a reverse warrior. So we turn that back foot round to face the long edge and we side bend away from that front thigh. And then we're gonna bring ourselves to warrior two and turn the front foot also to the long edge of the mat. Bring your arms behind you, interlace your fingers, squeeze your shoulders together, forward bend between the legs. Try to keep the shoulders off the neck. So it might not be your deepest forward bend, but try to prioritize the upper back muscles pulling or holding even the shoulders where they should be, which isn't suffocating your neck. Now release your fingertips, float your hands to the floor, spin your way back to the front of the mat. Step back to plank and lower yourself down from plank. And here, just bring your arms down by the sides of your body with your palms turning into the mat. So the palms are pressing the floor. And really try to spread that collarbone. Engage the legs, engage the belly. And then inhale, just a little float of the heart and locus. Keep the gaze down the neck long. And then lower yourself down. Bring your hands back under your shoulders. Press back. Downward facing dog. Couple breaths here. You might prefer child pose instead. Both will give you that length of the spine and the opportunity to rest for a moment and catch the breath. When your next inhale presents, float that left leg up to the ceiling. And as you exhale, step it through. Standing up again into our standing lunge. And when you get here, just pause. Just let yourself settle into the pose. Settle back into the breath. Just notice what's happening with your rhythms. And then we're gonna swing the arms and dive forward. Lengthen the heart out. Try and keep that collarbone wide all the time, even as you swing the arms. Forward and then back. Two more. One breath takes the arms out, and the next brings it back. One more time. This time, take your arms out wide like wings, and as you exhale, turn to the left. You might tap the leg with the right hand. Bring it back to center. Two more like that. Keep yourself on this sort of diagonal with the body. Imagine you've got a little rod holding you here, but really you're holding yourself in your belly. Last time we twist, we're gonna come back, we're gonna bring the hands down to the mat. See about straightening that front leg. 
So I'm just having a few breaths here. We're going to do our modified revolve triangle. It's modified because we're not worrying too much about the sort of foundation, not foundation, but the alignment principles of it. I want you just to find the twist, however is comfortable in your body as you open up that left arm. So we let the pelvis kind of swing around to facilitate that twist. Doesn't matter if your back heel touches. Just let yourself be breathing and connecting to your rhythms and not worrying about the quote unquote perfect pose here. Now, option to balance. So we can lift the back leg up. I think bringing the right arm a little further forward helps that happen. So we can kick out that right leg. Having a few breaths here. And then we're gonna lower the right leg, spin the heel in, sweep yourself up, reverse warrior. Find my balance. Couple breaths here. And then bring it back to warrior two with your arms out and we're gonna rotate the other foot. So we're facing the long edge of the mat, legs are wide, bring your arms behind again, draw the shoulders together and coming forward. Doesn't have to be your deepest forward bend, just try to not let the shoulders kind of fall forward which is easy to do because it's just gravity, isn't it? They want to come down with you, but you want to hold them off. Release the fingers, let them float down to the floor now. Soften maybe a little deeper into that forward bend. And then you're gonna spin your way back around to the front of the mat. Stepping back to plank, lowering yourself down to your tummy. And this time, take your arms around behind, interlace the fingers, draw the shoulders together. So revisiting the Shalambhasana Locust Pose, we're gonna keep the legs down and just lift the upper body. So left neck is long. Use the breath to help float you up. And then when you exhale, Come on down. We're gonna do two more of those. Inhale, floating up on the breath. Exhale, softening down. One more. This time, when you come up, you might let your legs come too, if that feels okay for you. And we're gonna stay up and keep breathing. Try and let the rhythms be with you. And then lower down, separate your hands, relax your arms, turn your head to one direction. And just have a moment here to bring the awareness back inside. Lift your head, turn it the other way now. So you bring the other cheek to your mat. And then bring your head back to center, your hands underneath your shoulders. Press back to down dog or child pose, whichever one is more comfortable for your body. Have a couple breaths there. And then make your way to sit, however you'd like to. So if you're in child pose, you might just sit up. If you're in down dog, float the knees. We're gonna come to the sit bone. So you could cross the ankles, send the legs out. And we're gonna take the legs out as wide as comfortable. Try not to let yourself kind of lean back here, but sit up nice and tall so you really find the sit bones. You might even have to remove some of the fleshy bit there to find them. Often if you kind of pull back the flesh, then you can really ground down through the bones. Now, we're gonna fold the right knee in. So bend your right knee, take your right foot to your left inner thigh. But we still have this straddle with the legs. Left arm come round to that right thigh, and the right arm is gonna reach up. And then side bend to the left. Try to keep anchored through both your legs. And just letting yourself breathe here. Holding yourself with the strength of the legs, 
It's softening into the pose through the breath. When you inhale, bring yourself back up. Stretch that right leg out. Fold the left leg in. So bend the left knee, bring the foot to the inner right thigh. We still have a straddle with the legs. Tiny turn towards that left leg. Left arm reaches up. Right arm is holding the left thigh as we side bend towards that right leg. Again, trying to really ground through the legs. If you have tight hips and your knee is high, a block under there, helpful. I should have said that on the first side, apologies. And now bring yourself up on your next breath. Extend the left leg out again. And just bring yourself forward. So same idea. The more we can anchor through the legs and sort of flex the toes towards the body, then we have the freedom to just reach the upper body out. But we want to soften on the breath. So the more you struggle in a pose, the less far you're going to get. But when you can surrender to it and just find the breath, you might surprise yourself. Your body might surprise you. Now walk your hands back up, take your hands to the outsides of your legs, soften your knees, draw the legs back together. One more forward bend here, maybe a little dip in the knees and we just lengthen out to the legs. Nice, slow, deep breaths. I can't help myself. I always love to end practice with this forward bend. When you're ready, slowly coming up, you might like to grab something warm, an extra layer, and then lie yourself down on your back to rest the body. When you bring your body down to the mat, just allow your awareness to go inside. Once again, just feeling the sensations arise. Feeling the breath, just breathing the body here. Hearing the rhythm of your heartbeat. And just noticing the passing of brain waves. Our biological rhythms are the symphony of the cosmos, music embedded deep within us, to which we dance even when we can't name the tune. Our biological rhythms are the symphony of the cosmos, music embedded deep within us, to which we dance even when we can't name the tune.
you can, just keep the awareness inside and rest a little longer. But if you're ready to come back, then slowly, slowly, just becoming aware of sensations outside of you. Deeper breaths, gentle movements in time, bringing the body over to the right side. And when you feel ready, opening of the eyes here and in time coming up to sit. So I thank you all. Namaste.